The NASA spacecraft Lucy is currently on its way out toward the orbit of Jupiter to study five Trojan asteroids and their accompanying satellites. Before it arrives, mission strategists are using a clever scheme to learn more about Lucy's target asteroids from right here on Earth. When an asteroid passes in front of a distant star, we call this an occultation. By carefully tracking the shadows of these asteroids cast upon Earth, we can learn more about each asteroid's shape and orbit, information that is critical to the success of the Lucy mission. I'm occultation astronomer John Keller and also director of Fisk Planetarium at the University of Colorado Boulder. In this episode of Science Through Shadows, join me and roughly 200 volunteers as we deploy on an occultation adventure involving 45 vehicles and over 90 telescopes spread out throughout Kansas to learn more about one of the Lucy targets, Palemily, and its recently discovered moon. My scientific interest has always been to try to understand how the Earth and other planets came to be. We know that these planets grew from the accretion of these small bodies that we see today as asteroids. The asteroids are actually the leftovers of that process. The planets themselves have evolved a lot since they formed, but these asteroids have basically been frozen in time since that period. So if you want to understand how planets form, the place to go is the asteroids. Hi, my name is Hal Levison. I'm the principal investigator of NASA's Lucy mission. Think of me the founder and CEO. Lucy is going to study Trojan asteroids, which lead or follow Jupiter in its orbit by 60 degrees. These objects are the leftovers, or you can think of them as fossils, of planet formation, and did we name the Lucy mission after the Lucy fossil to make that connection? Because both the fossil and the mission are going to tell us about our origins. Lucy is going by more asteroids than any other spacecraft in history. In 2027 and 2028, we're going to buy Everybody's and its satellite Keta. Polymaly and its unnamed satellite, Lufkus and Oris. And then in 2033, we're going by this cool binary called Patroclus and Meninicius. Many people have heard of or seen a solar or lunar eclipse, when the moon and earth align with the sun and one casts a shadow on the other. Another form of planetary alignment occurs when an object in our solar system passes in front of a distant star. This is called an occultation. Occult means to hide, and during an occultation, the star will be hidden from our view when a planet, moon, or asteroid passes in front of it. This produces a faint shadow over the surface of the Earth that we can measure to learn more about the size, shape, and position of the object. This is similar to measuring the shadow of a hand in sunlight. Measuring the shadow tells us about the size of the hand. With the preliminary campaign in March of 2021, our focus was on trying to get a really good measurement of preliminary. And we indeed found the object we were looking for. And I was quickly building up a, an image and a profile of the object. And then there was two measurements from other team members that I plotted up that just made everything go crazy. And very quickly we realized this wasn't part of Palemoli, it was something that was orbiting Palemoli. We were running out of opportunities to find it again, and in February I realized, okay, we've got an event that's close. And so then I just sat down and said, where could it be? And that sets the region that I needed to cover around Palemoli and say, okay, how many telescopes does it take to do that? And the answer came back to be, well, I need a hundred telescopes to make sure that I don't miss Sean. This was a big operation. Four nights before the occultation, almost 200 team members and volunteers assembled in Meade, Colorado. Many had never used this equipment before, and it was cold on that February evening. Cold enough to cause issues with telescope, electronics, and more. 
Uh, this So this particular one I understand is the largest one we've ever done. And I will say it is diff very different in that respect. You know, the last one I was on was 12 people <laughs> driving thousands of miles across Australia, which has a very different feel than 200 people in 100 telescopes, um, where you have logistical issues like how do you even set up 100 telescopes in one spot? After a second night of practice, warming up, and debriefing, we all loaded up our telescopes and headed into the windy plains near Salina, Kansas, the closest location that promised to have clear skies. The evening prior to the occultation, team members set up for one final night of practice. Uh, we are looking for an asteroid to pass in front of a little tiny star, and we're actually looking for a little satellite or moon around the Trojan asteroid that we're looking at. And so we're hoping to see this little tiny asteroid and a little tiny moon pass in front of a star and see it dim. On event day, 94 telescope teams scouted our sites in Kansas which were evenly spaced every two kilometers from Salina down to Wichita, 200 kilometers to the south. At sunset, we all drove out to set up our telescopes at our designated locations. Simultaneously, an additional 14 telescope teams were setting up gear in Spain to join in the campaign. Occultation volunteers Chelsea Farrell and Zena Tarafter were assigned to one of the telescope tracks. They drove out to their telescope site and began to set up their equipment. Despite working perfectly during the practice sessions, Chelsea and Zania's telescope would not come into focus. Uh, that doesn't look good, but last time this happened, we had to reboot the whole computer. Oh, so exciting! Good job. Oh, no. Play top failed. They knew their telescope was pointed in the right direction but if they couldn't fix the focus, they would miss the event. That is that we might be getting interference off of secondary mirror. So yeah, look. With less than a minute to spare, they found what was causing the issue and fixed it. But would they catch the occultation? I don't, I don't want to say, because I don't, it might, I feel like you always are going to think it. Oh my god, I'm really nervous. I mean, we won't know until they look at the data. Over a hundred telescope teams attempted to collect data. Had we captured the shadow of the asteroid Palemoli? Had any of our telescopes caught the much more elusive shadow of its small moon? We all gathered back in Salina, excited to warm up, to share stories from the night, and to analyze the data that had just been collected. Chelsea and Zena were one of 10 teams that measured Palemoli as its shadow passed over their telescope locations that night. Later that night, another team that recorded data 50 kilometers to the north confirmed that they also detected a small dip in star brightness, lasting only a fraction of a second. We had indeed located its moon. Using this critical information about the moon's orbit, Lucy mission planners will now be able to more accurately point the spacecraft's cameras to maximize the quality of science data that Lucy collects when it flies past Palemoli and its moon later this decade. Occultations are just fun. Even if you're not doing all the work behind it, just the fact that you could be sitting there and you're looking at this star, which, you know, normally you sit there and look at stars through the telescope, nothing really is happening. And then all of a sudden it winks out, comes back on, and now you've learned something about this object that blocked it out. This is almost like magic.